Okay, so uh, moving on to question number five, it says JM teaches in a school that uses a local area network and a wide area network. Give one example of a wide area network. So uh, the best example you can give for a wide area network is the internet. Okay, the internet is a wide area network. It's a network that you can access in any part of the world. Okay, some learners have accessibility needs complete the table to describe how two peripheral devices designed specifically for accessibility could improve the learning of people with accessibility needs okay now the important thing to understand over here is that they have said specifically devices that have been designed specifically for those with accessibility needs okay so you cannot talk about a microphone or a speaker you know these are devices that were not specifically designed for people with access accessibility needs, right? These were devices that were designed for whoever wants to hear sound, those who want to speak to, to the computer. Okay, now here they're asking you for devices that were specifically designed, you know, for accessibility needs. So be very careful when you answer this question. So one answer you can put over here is you can talk about the Braille printer. Okay, so you know those who have difficulty seeing or those who cannot see properly, or you know, what you can do is you have a printer that will print the characters in the form of dots so those who are blind or those who cannot see properly they can keep their hand on top of this printout where the dots are and they can you know follow what has been written on the paper or what has been printed on the paper okay so you can uh, write over here uh, it would help those uh, with let's say uh, visual impairment those with visual impairment impairment to read the characters on a printed piece of paper okay okay so one is we can talk about the uh, braille printer another s uh, peripheral device we can talk about is uh, something called a reading pen okay there is something called a reading pen you can do a google search and see what it is okay it's just like a pen but it's basically something that you keep on top of the text and it will interpret the text that is on the screen okay so you can write uh, you can write allows users allows users with dyslexia dyslexia to interpret text okay so this is another device that has been specifically designed for those with accessibility needs okay uh, moving on it says describe two benefits to teachers of using a local area network okay so they're asking you for two benefits for the teachers to the teachers of using a local area network so the first thing that we can talk about is we can talk about the fact that uh, teachers will be able to access the printer in the school a common printer in the school they will not have to you know go to a specific computer to use the printer you get it now in a, when you have a network in the school the printer can be shared within the network so from any device you will be able to access the printer now if a network was not present teachers will have to go to a specific computer that is connected to the printer in order to carry out their printouts you got it so you can write this down you can say a printer can be shared within the network so teachers can access the printer from any device connected to the network instead of using only one device to access the printer okay so if the printer is not connected to, net to a network then teachers will have to go to one particular device in order to access the printer but when it's connected to a network you can access the printer from any device okay uh, something else that we can talk about is we're talking about teachers so we can talk about the fact that teachers can store their files in a central location and then have students access them whenever required now normally what do teachers do they'll have to individually mail them to each student or they'll have to put them in a pen drive and give it to each student to copy isn't it but if they do have a network in the school they can simply put the files into a central location and tell the students okay from your devices in the computer lab access this file and start working or access this file download it and complete it okay so we can talk about that you can say uh, teachers can have all their files uh, stored to a central location in the network 
and have their students access it instead of giving the files to the students individually individually okay so if there wasn't a network for teacher like i told you she'll have to put in a pen drive and give it each student or she'll have to mail it to each student but when there is a network she simply puts in a central location and all the students who are connected to the network will be able to access the file okay so you can talk about that point as well okay moving on to the next question it says one type of uh, backup procedure the school could use is incremental backup state one other backup procedure the school could use to secure its data so we do know of three types already one has been mentioned which is incremental and then we have something called full backup and we have something called differential backup so you can mention any one of those okay so i'll just simply say differential backup you can talk about differential backup or full backup the next question says explain the purpose of an acceptable use policy okay so normally when you access a software online so normally when you use uh, an online software or if you use a service on the internet or if you download an app okay uh, there is something known as a acceptable use policy so in this acceptable uh, use policy it will be mentioning how you are supposed to use the software what are your rights in it what you should stay away from or what is prohibited in doing okay this is what a acceptable use policy will define okay it will give you your rights it will tell you how you're supposed to use it what you should do what you should not do what you should avoid who is the author who owns it okay all these details will be put inside a acceptable use policy okay so you can say uh, the purpose is to uh, define the rules in using the software or service okay and further mentions and and, and will further and will further will further mention what the user should not do and the consequences okay the user may face if rules have been violated okay so <coughs> this is basically what we have an acceptable use policy for also you can find further information further information such as such as support and uh, uh, author authors details may also be found in the use policy okay sometimes this kind of information will also be put in the use policy if you come across difficulties if you have issues you can always contact this number you can email this number you know that kind of information will be provided and it will be say it will be said that this is owned by this company okay copyright uh, material or you can say all rights reserved in the name of the company will be mentioned okay so these are certain things that will be put and these things are put in place so that companies can protect their rights okay because when they give you a service they need to make sure that you use it properly you don't violate it as such okay so that is the main reason for an acceptable use policy okay the next question goes on to say the learners use communication software describe the purpose of communication software so you can very simply say uh, communication software is used for users to exchange files text messages uh, uh, you can say files text messages images video and audio okay uh, communication software what, what shall we say just to get one more mark is used for users users to exchange files examples can be you can mention uh, whatsapp uh, facebook uh, uh, or you can what you can do is you can say examples you can say examples of the types 
types of communication software are okay there are many types of communication software we can talk about web browsers okay we can talk about online gaming okay online gaming platforms uh, you can talk about social networking uh, you can talk about uh, instant messaging okay so these are examples of the types of because when you say communication software that's such a big topic underneath that you get so many types so over here i've listed some of the types of communication software okay uh, moving on to the next question which i believe is the last question over here it says discuss the impact of vles on learners okay so we are supposed to discuss discuss what has vles virtual learning environments what kind of an effect has it had on learners the good the bad the advantages disadvantages all that we need to mention over here so i think by now you should be somewhat uh, familiar with the method that we use okay where we first understand the question now the question qu over here is quite simple easy to understand the next thing that we need to do is we need to create a mind map okay so in the next video i'll be getting my notepad on the screen and uh, we'll be doing a mind map of this question and thereafter we will start writing it as well okay see you in the next video